Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 690. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, I want to talk to you about why you should hold your stocks and not panic. I want to give you an update on what's going on in the stock market and give you my opinion about where I think we go from here, is it time to buy, if we've seen the bottom, and all of that good stuff. First of all, I think that the coronavirus situation has gone into a full-blown panic here in the United States. I know that some countries are experiencing a bigger outbreak than we are here, such as in China, of course, and Italy is having issues, some other countries are as well. But in the United States, only 10 people have passed from coronavirus. And while no life is to be minimized, I do want to make the point that this isn't anywhere near some other health risks that we have seen. Nonetheless, the press has really gaslighted this and people have gone into full blown panic mode. I'm hearing in Alaska that shelves are empty in stores. In Hawaii, that's true. In Washington State, at Costco stores, that's happened. Toilet paper sold out, hand sanitizer sold out, masks are sold out, and a lot of groceries as well. But beyond that, we've seen now that conferences are getting canceled, South by Southwest getting canceled. I'm hearing conventions in Las Vegas getting canceled small business conferences being canceled, hotels being canceled, cruise vacations being canceled. Travel industry is really in a full-blown panic, as are restaurants and malls and any place in general that the public congregates, certainly sporting events, same kind of thing. And with this full-blown panic, we are definitely going to see another leg down in the stock market. And the reason for that is because the first time we saw the first down leg, that was all about supply chain interruption. That was about, we didn't know what supply chain interruptions we were going to experience. We didn't know who was going to run out of parts, who wasn't going to be able to build cars, et cetera. And we weren't sure the full impact of not being able to get things out of China. Now I think we're going to see another leg down because of the reaction by the public to the coronavirus, because people are canceling their travel plans, because conferences have been canceled. This is going to mean hotel, airlines, cruise lines, restaurants, grocery stores, lots of small businesses are going to be having lower profits. And that means that the stock market is going to have to reprice itself lower. Therefore, I think because of this panic reaction, I'm now saying we are going to go down to a new low. And while nobody likes that and it doesn't feel good to anyone, here's why I think it's temporary and why I think you should hold through this. Number one, if you sell, you're locking in your losses. The best thing you can do is hold through this and allow your money to be invested so you can participate in the bounce upward. Number two, it's nearly impossible to time this. Nobody is going to know the exact bottom. We're not going to know that until it's in hindsight. And so you can't time the market. You can't try and sell now and get back in lower. Chances are you're not going to get back in lower and you're going to end up buying it at a higher price. Trust me, that happens all the time. And number three, it's very hard to do because the actual time that you should be buying is the point of maximum pessimism. That means at the point that it's the right time to buy, you're going to feel like the market's going to keep going down, like it's never going to turn around. The bad news is pouring out 
and it's just not going to look like there is any end in sight. And that is likely the precise moment when it will turn and go higher. The best thing you can do is dollar cost average in or allocate more funds into your 401k to take advantage of this downturn. But again, it's very difficult to try and time when to buy and trying to buy low or trying to find the absolute bottom to this. Just know that if we go to new lows, it's a temporary situation, but it's as a result of lower profits coming in. Companies have to disclose that. They're going to be announcing it. And that bad news is going to cause another leg down in the stock market. Once we get past that bad news reporting, then we have room for good news. We have room for the losses to not be as bad as they were thinking. We have room for good news to be found with the virus slowing down. We have good news to be found with possible vaccines or other containment. So once we get through the bad news, we have room for the good news to come back, which will cause the stock market to rebound. Now beyond this, I think the stock market in the United States can actually benefit from this. And what I mean is as factories come back to the United States, as the US healthcare industry does more research and comes up with either ways to boost your immune system or possible other ways to help people from getting the flu. That's going to boost the market. And in the second half of the year, don't forget, we have the USMCA kicking in, the trade agreements with Mexico, with Canada. And China really hasn't been able to make good on its trade promises. So we'll likely see more money come in from China in the second half. So I still think we have a very good shot in making our 15% stock market return this year by the end of the year. In the fourth year of the four-year presidential election cycle, you usually do have an 85% chance of a 15% rate of return in that fourth year. So I think that by the end of the year, we're going to be saying, what coronavirus? It's going to be in hindsight in the rearview mirror. It's going to be a blip that is a bad memory, but hopefully because you held through it, you will go on to see new highs by the end of this year. So I don't think we've seen the worst yet, but it's okay. We will get through that. It will pass. And this is part of investing. As much as it feels uncomfortable, as much as nobody likes to see their account value go down, The point is the reason why we're able to get 12.5% average annual returns in the S&P 500 for the last five years is precisely because of these fluctuations in the market. You see, if you were in a guaranteed investment, your interest rate would be about 1% right now, just what it is in a CD. In a short-term guaranteed investment, you'd be getting 1% or less right now but you're able to get to 10% long-term compounding and 12.5% over the last five years in the S&P 500 because of these pullbacks. That's why you're able to compound at a higher rate. But in order to get those higher rates, you have to stay invested. People that panic and sell are reducing their return to about a 6% average annual return rate. And that is not a good thing to cut your return in half. So stay invested to get the higher long-term compounding. Just don't look at your account, put it away. This is a temporary situation. It is not a permanent situation. It's a temporary setback in profits for businesses for a short period of time. We will get through this and it will be a blip in your memory, but we will go on to make new highs and things will get better, but only if you hang on through this, and possibly if you do some dollar cost averaging and doing a, do a little purchasing at regular intervals all the way through. Don't try and find the absolute low. That's really difficult to do. And there isn't any alarm bell that goes off that says this is the absolute bottom. We only know that in hindsight, the market will likely go down to new lows, bounce, go down, test those lows again, And by that time, you'll be so scared, the last thing you'll want to feel like doing is buying stocks. But that point of maximum pessimism is usually about when we're ready to turn around, take off, and the market will see some very strong rebounds and bounces 
on the way back up, just like that thousand point bounce that we had last Monday. But it's going to be very volatile here. We're going to see big days down and big days up. So just know that that's going to happen, anticipate it, and realize that that is part of your excellent long-term investment return that you're able to enjoy by being a stock market investor. We will get through this. We will get back to a roaring bull market, but we have to go through a little bit of pain before we get there. So just buckle up, hold on, and don't make any rash decisions that you're going to regret later. Today is Financial Freedom Friday on Instagram, and that means that I do an Instagram live show on my page over there at Linda P. Jones. So if you'd like to be able to ask questions and interact with me there, make sure to follow me at Linda P. Jones on Instagram. And don't forget, we have all of our Wealth Mentoring Library of Podcasts on my podcast page on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. There are podcasts there on every topic you could possibly think of, and we have a search box where you can search for particular topics you're interested in finding. And we have our podcast review contest going for a little bit longer until mid-March. You have the opportunity to win 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197, 10 of my Wealth Heiress books, which was named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority, and by the way, men love the Wealth Heiress book too. And five people will win a one-on-one -on -one wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on iTunes if you have an Apple iPhone. If you have an Android, please leave your review on stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book and leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times instead of just once for a podcast review and winners will be announced in mid-March. And if you're interested in joining my inner investing circle, the VIP experience, fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and I'll set up a time for us to talk. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.